In the name of our risen Lord, I bid you a good morning, and this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is William Nick Grant, and I have the privilege of serving as a pastor here at Pittsburgh United Methodist Church, where our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, even during the crisis, the pandemic of COVID-19, and our vision for doing so is to love, connect, and serve like Jesus. And my prayer for you this day is that you would have an encounter with our risen Lord, that you will be reminded that you are not alone, that your God goes with you in your highs and your lows, and that the community of Pittsburgh is right alongside with you. So in the life of the church, uh, we are still continuing to meet through small groups, uh, through our Zoom. Our youth group will be meeting tonight at five o'clock uh, via Zoom. Uh, we play games. We have a good time. Um, if you are listening and you want to join us, please uh, jump on and be a part of our youth group tonight. It'll be a blast. Also, every Wednesday and Sunday, uh, I lead uh, Bible studies. On uh, Wednesday, uh, we, we talk about a theme and we go through a, a, a scripture together. Wednesdays at 11 and Sundays at 9 a.m. right before worship. Um, that's our biggest small group where we have, where we come together. We share our joys and concerns. We talk about uh, what's going to be preached about right here and right now. Um, and my friends, our community still exists. It just looks differently. So today, as we wrap up our three-week sermon series on shipwreck, I want to commend continue to remind you that you are not alone and that yes, maybe the ship is gone and maybe life is the way that you would hope it to be no longer exists, but know that your God is with you and that you can make it through all of this. So my friends, let us prepare ourselves for worship and know that the greatest hope, our Lord and Savior, goes with us. So let us now worship together. Good morning. My name is Rick Miller and I'll be your liturgist this morning. Could you please join me in this morning's call to worship? Though the way seems long and the road rough, yet we will trust the one who leads us. Though the direction is unknown and we don't know the outcome, yet we will place our lives in Christ's loving care. It is Christ who brings us out to green pastures and restores our souls. It is Christ who gives us hope and peace. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in our opening prayer. Gracious God, you have given yourself to us in the person of Jesus. We have his example of loving ministry as our guide for our lives. We stand as people forgiven and reconciled to you. Be with us this day. 
remind us that you are always near. Guide our lives, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Pittsburgh United Methodist Church. My name is Marcia Cummings, and today I'm going to sing His Eye is on the Sparrow. I hope you enjoy it and sing along. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. It is now time for our children's message. So children, gather around. Last time we talked about paper airplanes and I hope you made a bunch of them at home and you've had a lot of fun. And today I wanna to use another item you could probably find at home and that is a bandana. If you don't have a bandana, you can grab a handkerchief, um, you can grab a, a, a hand towel, or you could even grab a shirt that's lying around. And when I was a kid, I would love to play all kinds of games with the bandana. One of my favorite ones is I'd act like I was the bad guy, I was the bandit, and I'd put this around just like this, tied around in the back, and then I'd be the bad guy robbing the bank or shooting people with my Nerf guns, and it was a lot of fun. But the, the way that I usually use a bandana was as a blindfold. So that, this is really simple to do. You just hold it like this, and there you go. Put it right around your eyes and then tie it in the back. And it was fun uh, to, uh, to be blindfolded. It was fun to play uh, pin the tail on the donkey uh, during birthday games. Or I could play the, the game I love playing in the pool, Marco Polo. I could still play that with a blindfold. Or my favorite of all time was the pinata, knocking all the candy out of the pinata. You know, it's fun to pretend that we can't see, but if we really think about it, it'd be really hard to live blind to not have sight. I want to tell you a story about a little girl. When she was six weeks old, Fanny Crosby got an infection and she went blind. And you would think, 
If you grew up blind, you'd be bitter. You'd be sad all the time, but Fanny's life wasn't like that at all. She had a lot of joy and hope, and she found a lot, she found a lot of that joy in her relationship with God. When she was eight years old, she wrote a poem of hope and that her, and that her blindness would not bring her down. She wrote over 8,000 hymns and poems. Boys and girls, I can't even imagine writing that many, right? 8,000 hymns and poems, including some hymns you might have heard before, like, To God Be the Glory, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. That's a really popular one. And she used the tragedy of her blindness to praise God. And during this sermon series, I've been talking with the adults about a shipwreck, right? Uh, I hope you like pirate stories like I do, but the idea is that when you're on a ship and things are going well, and all of a sudden you get shipwrecked and everything that you thought you had, you no longer have, what do you do? So it's a metaphor, it's an illustration for us to be reminded that what do we do when bad things happen? What do we think, what do we do when things go wrong? And our story for today is Jesus healing the blind, uh, Jesus healing uh, individuals uh, and bringing them back to wholeness. And that's my hope for you, that you would be reminded that God is with you even on your sad days, even on the days where you're really struggling. I pray that a tragedy or a tough time will never come into your life, kiddos. But if they do, remember that God is always with you. You will never have to go through those tough times alone and that God has the ability to take the bad things and transform them into blessings. So I hope you'll take your bandanas. You'll have fun this week. Uh, don't run into walls. That's no fun. But before we go, let me pray for us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your care in our lives and help us to see clearly your loving mercy in our lives. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, have a great week, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. It is now the time in worship to take up our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings, to be reminded of all the blessings that our God has bestowed upon us, and the moment in which we can give back just a portion of those blessings. I do want to remind you that you can faithfully give uh, through the mail or by visiting our website at pittsburghumc.org backslash giving. Let us pray. Generous, life-giving God, you sent Jesus that we might have life and have it abundantly. In response to this great gift, we now offer ourselves and our resources. May these gifts help us as a church to be your voice, calling all people to abundant life and to their true identities as your beloved. It's in your name we pray. Amen. As Christians, we are called to pray without ceasing. We look at Jesus and we know the priority that prayer took in his life and the example that he set before us. So this is our time in worship, to be reminded of the power of prayer, to give us an inspiration to pray without ceasing and to know that God is present with us. Let us pray. Merciful and loving God, you are our God, and worthy to be praised. Your power is greater than our wildest imagination, and your love knows no bounds. We come to you once more on bent knees, confessing that we have wandered once again from your will. We have let pride and hatred get the best of us. We have let the distractions of this world divert our attention to things that moth and rust corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. We have let fear and anxiety rule our thoughts and minds for far too long. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us. We want to be more like your Son and our Savior each and every day. We know you hear our pleas and we are overwhelmed by your abundant grace and mercy. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all I have needed... Thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John. As he walked along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Shalom. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Shalom and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. A Gospel reading from the book of Mark. They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Today, we conclude our three-week sermon series entitled Shipwreck. And I've heard from many of you how impactful this image of being shipwrecked has been. During this pandemic, all of us have lost something. And my continued prayer is that we would take courage and know that all is not lost. Remembering that it is possible to fail and not have our faith fail us. And it's possible to lose our lives and not lose our souls. And to navigate these treacherous waters, we must let go of our pride, wade through our vulnerabilities, and be willing to accept a helping hand. And even though the storms of life may seem ever-ending, there's always a way through it. There's always a way through the storm and on to the clearing. I will just say it. This stinks. You see, it stinks that it takes difficult seasons for us to appreciate life. It stinks that it takes difficult seasons for us to appreciate God and the beauty of our community that we live in. But it is a life truth we cannot escape. God can only be truly, truthfully experienced from the underside of things. It's hiding in plain sight the way that truth always is before loss, failure, and our suffering. When growing up, my my grandmother had a phrase for this phenomenon. When she was looking for something and realized it was right in front of her, she would often say, if it was a snake, it would have bit me. A way to lighten the mood of, oh, how silly am I? It's right there. The truth, uh, the reality that I should have seen so long ago is right in front of me. No matter how much we wish this truth away, we know that being on the other side of tragedy, being on the other side of heartache and personal shipwrecks open our eyes in ways we never thought possible. Jonathan Martin in his book, How to Survive a Shipwreck, writes it this way. The only way our vision can be whole is to see the whole to see the world through the lens of our brokenness. As long as we pretend we are not broken, We can't trust our own vision. We see the world in a funhouse mirror that shrinks our own faults and exaggerates flaws in others. I think that's an incredible point. I want you to hear that again. We see the world in a funhouse mirror that shrinks our own faults and exaggerates flaws in others. We see through the lens of pride, of ego, and competition. 
We cannot merely make a decision to see the world differently. Something has to happen to make us go blind first. My friends, I, I wish I had a better truth for you, but, but that's the reality we live in is that, that these difficult times, they have this way to open up our eyes and to see things that were right in front of us. You see, vision is a tricky thing. We can have our vision without ever being able to see. And the two stories of Jesus' healing that was shared today, the blind received their vision and sight while the religious leaders remained blind. They were more concerned about Jesus being a sinner and healing on the Sabbath rather than healing and renewal of the blind. If we continue reading in the Gospel of John, we, we hear Jesus teaching, John 9, 39 through 41. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see your sins, Remain. This is not the first teaching of Jesus of taking things and turning them upside down. We look and we say, Lord, I can see fine. I can see my surrounding. I, I, I'm in well health. I don't know what you're talking about. But it's just like that old adage from my grandmother that the stuff that's right in front of us, we can be blinded to and not be able to see it. It takes the shipwrecks in our lives to appreciate the clearing of all of our life storms. Many of you know that I'm a big fan of fantasy and sci-fi novels and movies. I love the Chronicles of Narnia. I love the Lord of the Rings and, of course, the Harry Potter books and movies. It is incredible to discover life truths in a completely imaginative world. Now, during Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, uh, when the students were going back to school, there's a scene that I think really makes a lot of sense um, that can teach for us today. There's a scene where most students saw carriages being pulled by nothing uh, but Harry Potter and his friend, Luna Lovegood, could see that they were actually being pulled by Thestrals. And Potterheads, I know I'm saying it wrong. That's the best I've got this morning. So Thestrals, a breed of winged horse with a skeletal body, faced with reptilian features and wide, leathery wings that resembled a bat's. Thestrals are known as omens of misfortune and aggression by many because they are visible only to those who have witnessed death at least once. So these, these uh, magical creatures, if you will, these Thestrals, they only were able to be seen by Harry and Luna because they had seen death in their life. They had experienced heartache in their life. It was only because these two characters saw death and experienced heartache that they were able to see plainly what was standing right in front of them. It's the truth for today, and it's a hard one to take. I was serving a church uh, in northern Indiana, and I often went to a treatment center where cancer patients received chemotherapy. I would uh, make my rounds uh, by greeting individuals. Uh, sometimes I was praying with them. Oftentimes I was just uh, shooting the breeze. Uh, sometimes I was telling jokes. Um, and I was just simply being present for those that were kind of stuck in this room uh, receiving treatment in, the, in an experience in the midst of a personal shipwreck of their lives of, of physical illness. There was one woman who I will never forget, and I'm sure I've shared this story with you before, but I hope you'll hear it once more. As I was making my rounds, I saw this woman standing there, and she had this shirt on, and in big, bright letters, it said, cancer sucks. Um, so if that language is offensive to you, I'm sorry, but when it comes to this context, I think it makes sense, right? So we walk up, I see that shirt, I start laughing, and I look at her, and I said, I love your shirt. And she started laughing with me. And she, but, but then she stopped and she looked at me. She kind of started tugging at her shirt and she said, you know, I really shouldn't be wearing this shirt anymore. I said, well, why not? I, I agree with the sentiments. You know, no one likes to be ill. Um, and this disease is awful. And she says, yeah, but, if it, but, uh, but I give God thanks for my cancer. Well, she stopped me in my tracks. I had to sit down. I had to hear her story. I said, you have me a hook, line, and sinker. You have me intrigued. Why would you say such a thing? Why would you give praise to God for disease? 
And she said it this way. She said, if I did not have cancer, there was no, there was no way that I was ever going to see on my own the love of God and the love of the people in my life. Because of cancer, I'm able to live. Because of cancer, I'm able to see things I were never able to see before. She, ne she never wished to have cancer. She never wanted anybody to ever have cancer. But in that moment, she became holy. She gave an example of, of reality that I had never seen before, that it takes the tough moments to see the truth and love of God. And we wish we could make it on our own, but oftentimes we're like the Pharisees where we think we've got it all together. We know the rules, we're following them, everything's good. I've never had to, I had care in the world and, and, and God is my God and I feel like I'm in the right path. But then all of a sudden it's brought to me and it says, you are blind as a bat. You can't see the truths that are right in front of you. And this woman receiving treatment became the gospel to me that day. The author, Jonathan Martin, I, again, the book uh, Shipwreck, the one I've been preaching on, he goes on to say this, the surprise on the other side of the shipwreck is that while your capacity for pain proved to be far beyond your wildest reckoning, and this woman would have said the same thing, I would have never known I had this much courage and strength to get through all of this, and, but uh, the author goes on to say, now you have a capacity to feel everything deeper, to feel everything deeper deeper. You are capable of a depth of empathy and compassion that could have been unthinkable before. And some of us dread that, right? We don't want to feel more. We want to feel less. We want more distractions. We want to medicate ourselves so that we don't have to feel the world. But if we're willing to be vulnerable, if we're willing to put, take these steps out and say, God, here I am. God can do incredible things to us. We can see those things that hurt, uh, that, that make God mad, and we can be, uh, have that righteous anger that God has. We can see those things where healing can be present. We can be that healing presence for others. You see, I'm a pastor, and why am I a pastor? I'm a pastor because of the difficult times in my life. I've gone through some, uh, some major shipwrecks in my life, and because of, of being on the other side of those, I say, wait a minute. I can now see clear. I have, I, I'm blind to a lot of things. Please don't hear this as pride. But I can see things that I hadn't been able to see before. And I'm able to move on and I have more empathy towards others. And maybe, just maybe, God can utilize a sinner like me to be more effective in reaching those that need God so desperately. I want to help others navigate the same treacherous waters and to help them to not give up and to see the hope in God. And that's the message. That's the sermon. That's, that's what God is telling us to, today is to see that we can survive the storms and that we even know the pain may be great and the difficulties may be greater than what we think we can bear. God go, goes through all time, grabs us out of the water once again and says, do not give up. My friends, please do not give up. The pain will subside. There is a beauty in the pain that can only be seen from the other side. In the Gospel of Mark, when the man was first recovering his sight, he could see people, but not clearly. And in this passage, this is one of my famous things, uh, one of my favorite, excuse me, uh, things about this passage. They look like walking trees. Just like how Peter is one of my favorite disciples. He didn't get it the first time, right? Uh, Jesus spat and did the healing, and then he says, okay, Jesus says, all right, did it work? Can you see? He says, well, I can see, but I can't see clearly yet. I know that you are God. I know that you are, are, are a prophet, I, or, or maybe not God yet, but I know that you're a prophet. I know you're a teacher, but I can't see clearly that you're the son of God. I can't see clearly that you're the savior that will get me through the highs and lows of this life, and that you are the light, and that you are the resurrection, and that I have all hope in you. I can't see it yet. They look like walking trees. When tragedy hits, our brains go to mush. Um, I, I'm not a doctor, nor uh, am I a therapist, but I've lived long enough to know that this is true. When things go wrong, our bodies get flooded with chemicals that I can't remember the names, and all of a sudden we start thinking unclearly. Our brains go to mush. The splendor of the world turns gray, and we become more susceptible to the lies of this world. Uh, one way it's been explained to me is my brain goes tricky. Tricky brain starts telling me all these kind of lies that I'm no good and that I should just end it now, that I should give up, that, that I will never have enough strength. 
But my friends, I am right here, right now, standing in front of you saying that it is a lie, that you have more strength than you can ever imagine. And when you don't have that strength, God will bring people into your life. Even if you can't see them, they will be there. The Holy Spirit will guide you and direct you and give you a path once again, even if you can't see that path right here, right now. We say Jesus is the light because sometimes when that darkness comes around, we can't see the path, but God is that light unto our path. This is the exact time where you need help the most. The time where you need the power of God and God's people. So again, do not give up. Even though the ship might be lost, you are not. And may I remind you, we are Easter people. Children of the risen Lord, no matter how bleak life gets, we must remember that death has been conquered and we are free from the bondage of sin and death. Yes, our old lives may be gone, and that's not a bad thing. That's actually a really good thing. But that transformation, going through the chrysalis until we can come out into a new creation, is very difficult and painful. And yes, our lives may be gone, and the unknown may be intense, intensely scary. But I encourage you once again to take heart in knowing that you will never be alone and that God has provided a way through all of our shipwrecks and that the clearing is almost here. The storm is about to lift. No matter where you are, if you're already in the clearing or if your ship is being battered by the storm, you have to know this truth, that God is with you and you still have a community that loves you dearly and wants to journey this, this uh, storm with you. Let's pray. God, we're so thankful for this metaphor, for this imagery of being shipwrecked. For, some, for many of us, this is how we feel uh, during this pandemic, during this time of uncertainty. God, we, we look at the news, we look at our own circumstances, and we say, God, I just don't know the next steps. God, I just don't know where to go. So God, I pray that you would remind us through your Holy Scripture and through our moments of prayer and through our singing and these moments of worship that we'd be reminded once again that we are not alone that you have provided a way forward for us and that you have hope that surpasses all understanding. So God, no matter where our tricky brains, our mushy brains, our, our sad brains, our depressed uh, brains, our, our dizzy brains, no matter where they are, we, I pray a special healing on those that are struggling this day. May they find comfort in this time and may they know the height and depth and all of your love that you have for them. God, we, we don't have it all figured out. But God, the one thing we want to stand on, the one thing that we want to be our foundation is your love. So Lord, help us to be faithful and help us to grab a hold of you when it feels like everything else is lost. We pray all this in your holy and precious name. Amen.
Hear now this benediction. We have been refreshed and restored. The clearing has finally come. We have been called and we have been guided. Let us go forth knowing who our true shepherd is, following his path, secure in the knowledge that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. Go in peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen.